Sheikh Yasser Qadi does not like ex-Muslims, and we can understand why he doesn't like ex-Muslims. His prophet ordered him to execute anyone who leads Islam, and for 14 centuries, people like Yasser Qadi have been beheading apostates. But now he's not allowed to behead apostates. Instead, he has to put up with them, and he is not happy about it. Uh, and, you know, these, these murtads, I mean, frankly, uh, it's as if they've, they've chosen to eliminate any noble purpose in their lives. And so they have apparently decided to spend the rest of their lives proving to us how miserable they are after having left Islam. So, ex-Muslims like the apostate prophet and Abdullah Samir and Armin Nawabi and Hera Sultan have eliminated any noble purpose in life. Uh, it's as if they've, they've chosen to eliminate any noble purpose in their lives. If they had only remained Muslims, they could have retained a noble purpose, like calling for the public beheadings of apostates. There's a reason why there's a capital punishment, because people like you, little weaklings, who leave their religion and cause uh, corruption in the land by spreading it, the capital punishment in Islamic law would be applied to you. We have no doubt, and we're proud of that. Yeah? Capital punishment will be applied in an Islamic state. But these ex-Muslims have decided to prove how miserable they are. And so they have apparently decided to spend the rest of their lives proving to us how miserable they are after having left Islam. Ex-Muslims seem to have a strange obsession with the religion they left. Every single tweet and video is about the faith that they hate so much. You know, it's like if you go through a bad relationship or divorce, just leave and move on. But uh, these uh, murtads, uh, they are so cringeworthy as to not even warrant their names being mentioned, much less their ramblings refuted. Interesting new strategy. If you can't behead them, just dehumanize them by refusing to so much as mention their names. These uh, murtads, uh, they are so cringeworthy as to not even warrant their names being mentioned. Tell us what you really think, Dr. Qadi. Really, frankly, I mean, it's, it's, it's frankly pathetic, the lives that they're living. But khair, that is, their, uh, that is their choice, and they will have to answer on the Day of Judgment. Now, you may have missed it, but Yasser Qadi offered an analogy in his attack on ex-Muslims. It's like if you go through a bad relationship or divorce, just leave and move on. Ex-Muslims are to Islam what a woman is to her ex-boyfriend. It's like if you go through a bad relationship or divorce, just leave and move on. Just as a woman should move on after a breakup, so also ex-Muslims should move on after leaving Islam. I actually like this analogy. I think it's a good analogy. But as is often the case with analogies, we need to fill in some details to make the analogy stronger. So, let's modify the situation between the woman and her ex-boyfriend to make it a bit more analogous to the situation between ex-Muslims and Islam. Suppose a little girl is born into the world, and her parents raise her to love a certain man. Before she can even form rational thoughts, her parents are raising her to be madly in love with this man, no matter what he does. Moreover, the parents make all kinds of false claims about the man, because they themselves were raised to believe these false claims. They tell their daughter that the man's suit has been perfectly and miraculously preserved, even though the suit is covered in holes. They tell their daughter that the man is a brilliant scientist, even though he thinks that the sun sets in a muddy pool. They tell their daughter that he's the greatest man who ever lived, even though the man is a sick, twisted, manipulative, violent moron. The girl is forced into a relationship with this man, and he spends the entire relationship manipulating and controlling her. Oddly enough, his main obsession is forcing her to dress and eat and drink and think and talk and even go to the bathroom like a 7th century Arab, even though she's not Arab and lives in the 21st century. But she does it. She obeys, because he's her boyfriend and a master manipulator. Eventually, however, she's watching some YouTube videos about her boyfriend, and she sees critics of her boyfriend providing conclusive proof that he's a sick, 
twisted, manipulative, violent moron. His suit is covered in holes. He's not a brilliant scientist. The only reason she loved him was that she had been manipulated into loving him, first by her parents and later by the evil manipulator himself. So she breaks up with him. She leaves him. Her parents are enraged. They say, we will never accept you as our daughter until you go back to your boyfriend, no matter what he does to you. She then realizes that her parents have been manipulated by him as well, and that he's such a masterful manipulator, he can destroy her relationship with her own family. That's how much control he has. This sounds like the script of a Lifetime movie. But she won't go back to him. So he starts sending her messages saying, no one leaves me. If I can't have you, no one will. I'm going to find you and I'm going to kill you. He even sends his most devout servants to threaten her with capital punishment for leaving him. The capital punishment in Islamic law would be applied to you. We have no doubt and we're proud of that. That's when she notices something even more disturbing. She notices that her ex-boyfriend, the master manipulator, is grooming millions of other girls. She knows from experience that these girls will be deceived, exploited, and betrayed. She knows from experience that these girls will be forced to dress and eat and drink and think and talk and even go to the bathroom like 7th century Arabs, even though they're not 7th century Arabs. She knows that everything her ex-boyfriend tells them will be a lie. So she decides that for her own safety and for the sake of the millions of girls who are being manipulated, and for the good of all future generations, she must expose her ex-boyfriend and show the world what a sick, twisted, manipulative, violent moron he really is. So she makes her first video for her new YouTube channel. The video is titled, Why I Left My Boyfriend. That's when she starts getting mocked and insulted by one of her ex-boyfriend's enforcers, a loyal member of the grooming squad. It's like if you go through a bad relationship or divorce, just leave and move on. Oh, you'd love it if she just moved on, wouldn't you, Dr. Cotty? You'd love it if, after years of manipulation and abuse, she just kept her pretty little mouth shut about how that violent, manipulative control freak who used to be her boyfriend is telling lies and ruining lives. You'd love it because you're a manipulative control freak, too. You know, Dr. Cotty, your real purpose in all of this isn't your scholarly work. That's just a show to cover up your real job here. You're more like a slimy PR rep who goes around trying to discredit the victims of your violent, abusive, perverted, power-hungry client. You keep blaming the victims and gaslighting them so that your client can go on abusing people. That's pretty much all you are in this world. It's what you've been reduced to. And you say that ex-Muslims are the ones who are living pathetic lives? Really, frankly, I mean, it's, it's, it's frankly pathetic, the lives that they're living. Why do you do this? Because you've been manipulated too, Dr. Qadi. Since we're drawing analogies, I can say that you're like one of the victims of the UK rape gangs who got older and then helped the rape gangs find new victims. But thanks for the analogy. I think it's going to come in handy. Probably not as handy as the holes in the narrative interview that's been destroying people's confidence in the Quran, but it will still come in handy. Now, let me ask all of the ex-Muslims who are watching, what do you think of Sheikh Yasser Qadi's relationship analogy now that we've improved it? Muslims keep asking you why you don't simply move on. In the comments section, explain to them why you keep talking about Islam.